call. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'm pleased to be following from the Chair of the Joint Standing Committee on Migration, and I want to, just in the very little time that I have available to me, um, make some points about uh, the, our inquiry into the efficacy of current regulation of the Australian migration agents. Uh, this is a wide-ranging uh, inquiry. It was also a timely inquiry because, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's always a good thing uh, for the parliament to review the uh, operations and the actions of migration agents. Generally, most of us as members of parliament will receive many complaints from our constituents about uh, all sorts of things, but one of the more common ones are often uh, constituents and the um, negative experiences they've encountered at the hands of migration agents. Uh, this was a very good inquiry and uh, it was an inquiry that also looked at the education agents. This was an introduction to the uh, inquiry that uh, very little um, very little examination has taken place into relation to education agents and how they operate. Um, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, the inter international education industry is Australia's third largest export sector and the country's leading service export sector. International students studying and living in Australia contribute some $30.3 billion to the Australian economy, and that, that was the figure for 2017. International students generally engage the services of an education agent uh, for a range of reasons, uh, including uh, distance and travel, assistance with options for studying and living in Australia. So education agents, Madam Deputy Speaker, are contracted by the education providers and they're often used to recruit students on behalf of that education provider. Uh, education agents are currently not regulated in Australia. So during the inquiry, the committee received representations from a number of international students with evidence that alleged education agents were operating in an unlawful and unethical matter, manner. Uh, these issues related to enrolment status, payments of enrolment fees, and the processing of enrolment fees, payments of health insurance, and other areas of serious concern, I'd have to say, um, Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, went to providing advice that certain courses of study have, have permanent migration pathways when, in actual fact, they do not, they did not, and they do not. These courses tend to be tended to be long and financially lucrative for the education agent and possibly the registered training college involved, but they were an economic burden to the international student who had been lured here. On the, uh, virtually under the pretense that if they did this, this was a pathway to permanent residency in Australia. Education agents um, using their overseas businesses uh, were attempted, it, we, we heard anecdotal evidence that they were attempting to circumvent Australian uh, migration regulations. So, and as a result, those students who actually had the courage, and we met with some of them in Sydney, had the courage to come forward and give, every, well, if not give on record evidence, some did. Uh, I certainly spoke to them, and so did the chair, uh, off the record. When they did um, find the courage to speak to us, they told us, or not only to us, but to actually raise concerns. They were more often than not threatened, um, and they were also threatened when they wanted to change courses and education providers or leave the country. So there is a very unsavoury um, thing going on in this space between uh, education agents, international students, and, uh, and, and some colleges. Now, another issue uh, was, uh, that was raised with us was education aides were providing unregistered, they are not registered as um, education agents, but they're also providing immigration advice. And there was a very real fear uh, by the students who'd received this advice uh, about complaining, um, because more often than not, they were afraid that it would impact on their visa application. So, um, Madam Deputy Speaker, the committee um, resolved, well, uh, uh, agreed to um, examine the need to regulate education agents, um, and in particular the ones that were more difficult to pin down were the ones who were operating overseas. Um, at the end of the day, uh, education providers are responsible for their education agents' actions, uh, but the committee heard significant evidence that providers were not taking any responsibility whatsoever. Uh, international students had little consumer protection, and international education regulators and education providers did not provide 
any assistance to students who are affected. Uh, to address this in particular, I draw uh, the parliament's attention to recommendations 5, 6, 7 and 8, uh, which we believe are recommendations that uh, ensure education agents meet a set of requirements, including a government authorised training course and continued professional development. Um, the committee has also recommended the introduction of a sanction structure using a demerit uh, point system. I'll end here, Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, because I now will have the opportunity to speak at greater length to both reports uh, when it's referred to the Federation Chamber. I too wish to uh, thank the chair and all other members of the committee, including the secretariat. I thank the member and 